All right, I'm back for the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. Yeah, that's already. Please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it today. So markets here today with kind of a, just a real sideways day. Um, we did have a few headlines and stuff like that. Um, biggest, obviously, Powell speaking at uh, around 1 p.m. And, you know, essentially he said what um, I've been telling you for the last year or more, more um, and that is inflation's not really going to go down. Uh, well, he didn't exactly say that. He said, you know, it's, it's going to be more of a challenge. It's more concerning. Um, we're surprised it's not going down um, and that you know, things of that nature. And um, you saw a pretty good sell here in the afternoon. But, you know, double bottom held from this morning. We had a little bit of a dip and then a, a, a retrace here. A pretty good pop here and then right back down a lot of this is just opex games so again directional bets getting killed a lot of premium being sold at, on both ends here um and honestly i you know if you're a bear i don't think you really wanted us to break down here anyway um i think the healthier move here would be to bear flag for the next two three days and i think right now what we're seeing kind of is just indicative of kind of dead cat bounce um but again you can see kind of the you know just looking at an hourly rsi higher low there with an equal low or a lower low sellers just a, lo a little exhausted here they had a trend day yesterday so um if we were going to go down again today it would have been you know it would have taken a lot right it would have taken a lot of of um you know force to get us down there and you know honestly if we did sell off hard um this morning i would probably would have bought with both hands around that 5k handle if we got down there um just because you're you're bordering on you know an extreme here um so again, again for bears, I, I think, just like I said back here, I said you didn't really want to sell off hard, and we just kind of stayed inside bar, five six days, and then we started to shoot down. Nothing against having that happen again here. So if we just kind of trade neutral to up, maybe even if it, maybe even into fifty one hundred, there's nothing to say we can't uh, shoot down into you know the gap here and that five k whole round number. The one thing I will say is that you do have there is a ton of open interest and gamma exposure at 5k obviously uh for friday and spy 500 so that could be a little bit of a magnet but i think maybe for the next day maybe two days um you kind of work off that short-term oversold condition here on the hourly and so on and so forth um and then you can kind of get another drop possibly late thursday or friday um so again but does that have to happen no could we could we go down to 5k yeah it, tomorrow yeah it's possible but um, given the kind of OPEX effect that's going on and based on what I saw them do multiple times today, um, basically teasing the downside and then teasing a breakout and then teasing the downside again. Um, you know, now they're probably going to tease the downside here one more time as we get into the close. Uh, it just looks to me like, um, A, we're consolidating, we're in backing and filling mode for bears. Um, and uh, they're trying to collect premium from anybody who's trying to play for a big squeeze or for a, break, a big breakdown. So right now, a little bit neutral, but I'll give the market a slight upside bias here as I just think the bears need to regroup, which again, isn't terrible. It's not bearish. It's not, <laughs> it's not bearish for bears. Uh, it's, uh, I don't want to confuse everybody. Um, it is bearish in the big picture. <laughs> but, um, you know, short term, you get a little bit of a bounce here, reset those uh, oscillators and then we can possibly have another drop here so um that's kind of what i'm looking at today i won't make too much out of it outside of that um on the triple q's here we did back test this uh big line in the sand i've been talking about that for quite a while now for at least a month now we back tested it and we're back below so we'll see if that holds again if we just bear flag here we can go lower um even if we get back above it's not like the end of the world they can still there's still plenty of room for lower highs for bears here um ultimately i do think it bare minimum you're gonna come down and fill this gap at 425 but i, I think um the next kind of leg down would get us down to that previous all-time high and the same thing goes for the spiders here i think it i think 4800 is really not out of the question um but right now we won't make too much out of it here a lot of pinning going on iwm was down 81 cents this so is starting to get a little overdone here to the downside in the short term um we did have certain stocks like again the ai names um nvidia up 1.7 on the day smci up about 10 percent on the day i think arm yeah arm was flat let's see palantir yeah palantir flat here but it did come nicely off the low so again kind of that same tech trade here look at this just here 
SMH, right? It's basically the AI list at this point. Um, but the SMH here up 86 basis points with a flat market. That's been holding the market up here where, while the Russell comes down. It wouldn't surprise me at all over the next two days or so. The Russell starts to get a bounce and then the semis come back in. Just pin effect 101. So that's kind of my thought right here. Um, again, not making a ton out of the price action here this week. Um, but we'll see if that can get a bounce. 200 is going to be your resistance um, in the near term. Let me just put those lines. You can see 200 is your resistance here in the near term, as well as that trend line. Um, there's the Dow, same kind of thing. I expect the Dow to kind of rotate, maybe back test. Um, there we go. <laughs> uh, market's closing here in three seconds, by the way. Um, but we have support here. I expect the Dow to maybe bounce up. 385 is short term. Let's put that in. So it'll be your short term level. Um, and then, you know, perhaps the semis and the Qs kind of back off here. So again, I'm just kind of expecting mean reversion and that type of thing over the next, uh, you know, three, four days. So anyways, we talked about the SMH already. Up and a down tape, holding the 50 moving average here. Um, does have possible lower highs set up, but until this pivot low gets taken out, it could have a higher low as well. I do ultimately think it will, but right now semis just pulling back and we don't want to make too much out of it right now. IGV had that big slice yesterday. Uh, we talked about Salesforce. Big move down here. It bounced a little bit today. Uh, but IGV is vulnerable here if we close the week below that pivot, um, possibly down into the, uh, you know, 74, 75 handle. So IGV still weak. Um, transports, guess where they went? 15.2. Is that significant? Yes, everybody should know that. That's that inside bar low. So if that gets closed below by uh, on Friday, this is a failure and uh, the transports could be in big trouble. But they did hold it by the skin of its teeth for today uh rates had a nice little uptick today you can see the two year here i don't know this doesn't look like something that's getting rejected honestly um there's a lot of resistance up here but it's not you know when you go up into resistance and if something's weak and it's going to get rejected usually you'll go up into it and then it'll come down uh kind of in a not a straight line but it, in a sharp angle this is just consolidating right so again if this ma just catches up there's nothing to say we can't go higher than 5% on the two-year. Um, and then we know the Fed ain't cutting. So that's the risk there. Five-year yield, higher high. Again, some resistance here, pivot, right? And that's where it pulled back from. 10, same thing. Let's just draw that in so it's there. So right there, just shy of 4.7. And then 30s, that's exceeded my target. But there's your other pivot at about 4.82, right? High of the day was 4.804. So 30 year, you know, maybe 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 need to pull back a little bit more. But I'm not in the camp that we're going to make new highs necessarily. If they do, it'll be nominal, I think. Um, I'm not expecting a breakout in yields this year. Uh, maybe at least not until later in the year. But I, I do think they stay elevated and there's going to be higher lows here moving forward. That's the base case that has been the base case. And it's going to continue that way for... I think several years. Um, XHB here. So pretty good relative weakness from XHB, right? So this has been a, a, an outperformer for a long time, but um, it did come off the lows pretty nicely today. A little, little flush and then it rebound, but down 1.28% in a uh, up tape. Again, look at where we went, right to about 100. We talked about that. Um, actually been talking about that for a couple of days, but right into this little pivot and then eh, breakout. So that got back checked and we came off the lows. I still think your better support is around 96, 97, and then down to uh, 92. There's also a trend line here, the, the pink that I've kept on here. It goes back. We broke through it here, but it does extend out still. And we gapped above it at one point here that, you know, over time, this could meet up with the 92 handle right here. See, it's up sloping. So that could be a, a you know an additional level if we got down there again. I, short term, it's getting a little stretched here, but pretty good, pretty good uh, relative weakness for the first time in a while for the home builders. VNQ just getting sliced, right? So this is again, this is why we pay attention to these patterns so much, and um, that's why I don't like buying the first, definitely not not the first support um, after a failed pattern like that, especially on the weekly. 
I don't even know if I, I'd just say 77 right now for VNQ. So pivot high, and then we gapped right above it right there. I would just say that's your big level. It could still bounce up towards the end of the week, but I think that's going to be a selling opportunity. So I don't like what VNQ did last week, and it continues to be weak here um, both days of the week. XLF with that ugly gap and crap yesterday continued lower today. We had Bank of America. This is when I tried to short this morning. Um, had a good sell signal on it. It just didn't, it, it, like it's, <laughs> it, uh, the second the market opened, it just flushed. I didn't get a chance to get filled on it. But take a look at that move. 50, uh, 36.17 down to 34.17. So that's a $2 move. That's a huge move for BAC. Down 3.5%. Again, big move for BAC. Came right into that 34 handle. So this is where we stalled out. We couldn't get above it, couldn't get above it. And then we broke out. And that's where it got back checked to. Um, a big sell for BAC. Uh, Morgan Stanley did gap up and it sold off sharply. I tried to get into this one too. But again, these things sell off so quickly in the morning sometimes uh, after earnings. This, those algos kick in um, and they just, you know, you got to be quick. Or you have to, you know, you got to be a little risky and you got to try it pre-market. Um, but either way, Morgan Stanley came in. It did, it did finish green though still. It came off the lows. But XLF under pressure. Um, KRE into this mini little double bottom here. Again, maybe a little short-term overdone, but um, I still don't like it on the weekly. Um, KBE also, guess where it went? Right to the weekly level. I think it probably holds this week, but we close below that at any point. That is a failure and a sell signal. Um, broker dealers down again today, but again, came off the lows. And again, I think they want 560. Doesn't mean they can't bounce before then, but um, I think that's a, that's a very good level there for, for XBD. Um, oil today um, held up just down 13 cents. This looks like it's consolidating here for possibly one more move. It's been pretty tight here over the last really almost two weeks. Um, and we had a little test candle yesterday. It came off the lows. No movement here today. Um, just kind of inside. I think this can get one more bid and then I think it's about it's about done. But it's still holding up well. Um, XLE had a really nice sell earlier. It went right to 93 uh, or excuse me 90. Well, yeah, 93.70. And it got a nice bounce off the lows there. We'll see if that can follow through tomorrow. Um, maybe retrace towards the 96 handle. Um, they've had a good, and the same thing you see XOP here as well, finish with a nice tail candle. So these might be ready to get a little bounce uh, over the next day or so. But, you know, they definitely came in. We talked about how overbought they were on the daily. OIH hitting the 200. So this one might be ready to bounce too. I still think there's lower prices in the cards for all of them. Um, is assuming crude doesn't, you know, assuming crude doesn't get through, you know, the 52 week highs, which I don't see happening at the moment, but, um, they all came off the low state, uh, CCJ down 13 cents, but again, good tail candle testing the 20 MA, um, no real problems with this. This can just consolidate. URNM was much weaker, but again, it came off the lows and it, you know, closed back above this previous pivot. But still on the softer side there. Um, Nat Gas had an interesting day. So it was down earlier and then it got a huge bid um, right around, like it was like a little bit after Powell started talking. There's a lot of shorts in this. Um, and I don't know. There's one theory. Maybe you get somebody got margin called right here and um, they had to cover a Nat Gas short. Um, the reason I bring that up is because there's a ton, like this is one of the most crowded short trades there is. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if somebody got, you know, a margin called on something else and then had to cover this. I don't know. There was, I heard a rumor about um, the LNG export ban getting lifted. I don't think that's been confirmed. Um, if that's true, this has real legs. Uh, but right now, big bid came back in pretty sharply. A lot of supply up here. Um, but if this can consolidate here on the hourly, nothing to say it can't get um, get something going here. And, um, you know, put put it back, a, a retrace back up to 190 maybe $2. So I'll be watching that tomorrow. But that came off the lows pretty sharply. Dollar index here coming into a big supply zone. So there's just, there's just a lot up here. And uh, it's getting overbought. So I'm kind of in the camp that dollar has got to back off here. It can still put in a higher low at 105 or 105.50 or it can just flag 
in time and then get through that. But there's a lot of resistance. I just don't see it getting much past 107 uh, at the moment. But dollar index um, still green, still very strong. I thought we, I thought the dollar was. Tell me, I thought the dollar was going to crash. That's all I've been hearing. But still holding up. Gold up uh, 1% today. Still inside of this tail candle. That's still a sell signal until proven otherwise. GDX was down again today. Again, came off the lows, which is not bad, but diverging, right? We talked about this two weeks ago. I said the miners are leading the metal. Expect, you know, that, expect that to be bullish. And guess what? It, it was. Now it's the other way around. So just be aware of that. Silver did retrace uh, all of yesterday's move. So you know, basically most of it, um, down one and a half percent. Again, this is still a sell signal until proven otherwise. Um, SIL finished off the lows for what it's worth. Uh, but again, we knew yesterday, SIL red, silver green, that was a red flag. Platinum still backing off here. So might have one more dip to make. And then I think it can put in a higher low after that. And palladium also struggling just a little bit. Um, but, you know, it's been very range-bound here. Well, again, I still like it down here at these levels. Copper finally getting a, a respectable red day, but didn't even take out yesterday's low. So it's still... You could make a case, though, by the way, that could be a hanging man on copper. Um, gap up, kind of a hammer candle at the highs. So mm, be careful here with copper. It could be a little bit of an exhaustive signal. It's had a big run. It's still strong, but it might have to come in... Um, Again, 425 is your immediate level. I don't think that would hold or, uh, immediately. I think 415 is a better bounce level for copper futures. All right, lastly, Bitcoin. So this is still this is starting to show a little bit of weakness here. So we broke down and we tried to break out, failed, and then we broke down here. And now we're just kind of going sideways inside of that breakdown bar. That's not good. So that's setting up possible bear flagging um and that could take you down to you know again like i said yesterday 56 59 um somewhere in that area you got the 100 ma there and then your bigger levels at 52 much much bigger level however if this just stays firm and stays sideways there's nothing saying that this can't just firm up and just do this right oops Are you zooming out? You know, I can just do that and then I can go higher. Or I could retrace here and then go back up and then go higher, right? There's lots of things it can do. But short term, definitely a little bit weaker. And continue, showing continued weakness, I'd rather, I'd, I'd say. All right, so anyways, um, getting back to SPX here. Um, again, I think short term bears you just want a bear flag here for the next day or two then you could possibly drop to 5k um, if we start to dump out really hard over the next you know without consolidation i'd probably be looking at this as a very tradable bounce here um in that 5k area 49.80 with the gap fill below that you got the 100 ma too so if we went down there in a straight line yeah could we overshoot 5k and hit that i, I would be really surprised if we if we just broke through that um, unless you have some type of a volatility event it's going to be hard to break through there you also have the weekly 20 ma 4970 i think that's a that's a tradable level here for the market but right now um again opex week a lot of pinning going on a lot of whipsaw expect um expect them to you know sell a lot of premium and try to whip everybody out of this market don't want to make too much out of the short-term price action um until we get you know more towards uh friday and the later part of the week so anyways guys gonna wrap it up here you guys take care Come find me on carnivaltrades.com. I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow.